Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya Sanders again, and um, we started this new format with our NWET blog, and it's more of a, we see what we talk about, we don't plan it, we don't plan a presentation, and this is episode 13, and uh, we pretty much stayed focused on the subject of photos and students, talking about the importance of how we use photos, how students use photos, um, acceptable use kind of stuff. Um, and remember, uh, after you're done watching this, you'll have our contact information at the end of this video that you can email us with any questions you may have regarding um, student safety in regards to using uh, photos. Um, and the URL on the screen right now, uh, that is the link to all of our videos, all of our materials, um, and also you can find us on YouTube under NWAT Tech Time, just do a search for that. But also if you go to the resource page link, then you can also find other episodes and other inf important information on our YouTube channel. Enjoy. Well, you know, um, I think it is important that we have a conversation in regards to images out there, um, using your photos, putting your pictures out there. Um, I, there's a reason that school districts have um, their students sign um, a policy at the beginning on how your photo can be used. And certain when you go to a concert and they give you, uh, you know, photos are gonna be taken here or sign release, it's gonna be put in our publications. I, there's a reason for that. So, um, you know, I think it is an important conversation to have about, um, images out there that exist. So, so when it comes to images, and this is something that we uh, oftentimes talk about with district administration and teachers, is that, you know, so the first thing that you want to make sure is that your district has a very clear policy, not a three-page legal document. You may need that as well, but a very clear policy about what is permitted regarding photography on school grounds and at school sponsored activities. And, and the short version is um, that uh, taking and sharing of images from the classroom, uh, from the office areas or at school events uh, is not permitted unless specifically allowed for that activity. Uh, so it's a general prohibition against it. And there was uh, something in the news very recently about uh, parents and students were filming videotaping using their cell phone uh, and then sharing uh, online uh, a source. And, and what was kind of scary about that is that the parents um, specifically were trying to make the school look like it wasn't doing a very good job. And so they, they would take a long video and they would edit it. And they'd have these little snippets that, that made it look like the school was doing, you know, uh, very inappropriate things regarding instruction, school discipline, uh, management of students and so forth. Um, and, and in reality, the school was doing everything they should. If, if you look beyond the five second video that was initially released and you looked at the next 15 seconds, you saw where the inappropriate activity was happening. And then you saw a teacher walk up and say, wait a minute, you know, this is not allowed, you know, you, and it was like, okay, the school was doing what it should. The school was uh, very appropriately monitoring and intervening um, when kids were hassling each other, saying inappropriate language and so forth. Um, but the district policy uh, did not prohibit videotaping and sharing on social media, um, school activities, and in particular, uh, discipline uh, and uh, actions by teachers in the classroom that might be very appropriate. So we can talk more with district leadership uh, about some of the policies you want to make sure in place. But the really short version of that is it begins with um, students are not allowed to make video or audio recordings in the classroom at any time. And they're not allowed to make video or audio recordings in office areas or private locations such as restrooms and locker rooms at any time, period. Yeah. And then we go from there on writing up the 10 paragraph legal things. 
So yeah. that's one protection. Now we get to what kids do that are between students. And uh, Tanya, Judy, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the issues and concerns that we have when students take pictures of themselves or others and share them? I think it's too easy to, to share freely. Um, and I have too many specific, I don't want to talk about them for, for reasons of like people if they watch this, they're going to know who I'm talking about, but. Um, so you can just say there is a student I heard of in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it still irritates me and makes me mad because um, I don't like that adults who know better don't take accountability for the kids that they have in their care. I, and, and you, you know, there are some districts that I know that take this really seriously. And um, there were some students that um, took pictures, uh, the kid took pictures of his little brother or sister and posted them. It was, it wasn't an innocent thing, but everybody else started commenting and saying mean things about, and, you know, about the, the little brother or sister. And this is a three or four year old and people were just, comments you know trolls whatever they were it was out there and um that student went to jail you know posting pictures of his own sibling on snapchat or instagram or wherever you know and so and that was done by the district the district brought up charges um on the child and um because it affected another one of their students um with other students you know of course if people are commenting on social media so you know, and then you go the the flip side where they're just like, ah, kids will be kids. No, we're the ones who have to teach them. You don't share photos online. You don't share personal information online. You don't share uh, images of yourself. Um, I think uh, we got a letter once uh, from the from uh, one of the districts that said, if someone with this name is sending you messages and saying they want you to send them pictures, don't, it's a scam. I mean, I'm sure it's happening over and over again. My son, uh, you know, lost a, you know, he's still good friends with the kids, but almost lost his, his good friend because they were fighting over this girl in Canada and they were sharing photos with her. And I said, it's first of all, uh, I said, first of all, honey, it's not a girl and she's not 16 and she's not going to run away when she's, 17 and come and date you two. She's not going to do that. You know, um, it, you know, we had to set them straight because it was causing animosity. Yeah. yeah. And, and, to, and to help kids understand that is, is just so and, and and teachers, you know, this is kind of mature audience sort of thing. But, you know, you're probably well aware of it, that it's a thing right now um, mm -hmm. among uh I, honestly, I, I, I've seen it happening. Uh, I'm aware of it happening. I haven't seen it uh, happening uh, as young as is, you know, fifth and sixth graders, certainly in uh, middle school and high school level. Um, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, if you love me, you'll take a picture with your top off. If you love me, you'll send a picture of yourself naked to me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a thing. You'll show if you trust me, you don't trust me. If you love me, you'd trust me and you'd send me this picture. I mean, that is kind of a thing that's going on right now. And and it's it's something that we're well aware of. Well, we have to let students know and we have to talk with them appropriate to grade level, very frankly, that if the person really loves them and really trusts them, you're not going to ask me to send a naked picture. And I just can't stress strongly enough how dangerous this is you know what once you send that picture electronically to someone you never know where it's going to end up and we were involved with a case at nwt uh you know sometimes we're brought in to help the districts when something happens i'd so much rather that we were brought in ahead of time and it's not just nwt there's many great sources out there to help with district internet safety and student awareness but but in this particular instance um the uh um, uh, captain of, of the uh, uh, football team um, uh, sent a picture of himself to a cheerleader and the cheerleader sent a picture of herself to the football team captain. Well, um, it's probably no great surprise that the football team captain thought this was pretty cool. And he shared the picture 
with several of his teammates. And the next thing we know is we're looking at prison time for both of them. Um, uh, because the, um, they were over 18, but the people they were sharing their pictures with weren't. The people that were getting the pictures shared to them were minors and, and they had no idea um, the consequences of what happened. Turned out in this particular instance, neither one served time in jail, but scholarships were lost, um, uh, educational opportunities were lost, and uh, uh, awards that would have been received for the season were lost, all because they innocently shared a single picture with each other. And, and, and there are certainly much, much worse stories than that. So help, help students understand and know the consequences of sharing images. And, and that, that's a hard thing to do because it's so easy to share it. So easy to be in some private location and, and say, hey, oh, just, just show me a quick picture. Or, you know, you don't even have to send a picture. Just go live for a second. Well, if it's on the device, you know, the person at the other end can do a screenshot. You know, there is, you know, it's not going to disappear when you turn it off, no matter what kind of filtering software you have. It is possible and frankly likely. So we've, we've got to let kids know about the danger of this. And, and this is true for adults as well. So. Um, sharing images is a images are a powerful, powerful tool, and, and we've got to help protect kids or from the dangers and the consequences, and let them know what the dangers and consequences are. The first step of that. The, the one question I have for Judy, um, along going along with what you just said, Roger, is, um, you know, your grandkids are on on devices sometimes, or or maybe they're not. Just but how are you and their parents kind of helping them with that? And, and I'm asking personally, because right now I'm struggling with the twins being seven, they're on devices and some of the things that they're stumbling onto and, and experiencing, but how are you guys navigating that? I think we're pretty much always there, you know, being two and four, we're there, somebody is there, even if they're not looking at what the kids are looking at, but doing things like setting up uh, YouTube kids and the grandsons know that this, the four-year-old knows that's where he goes. He doesn't look at anything else um, or you're in a restaurant and you want them to be in your phone with uh, appropriate sites. So, um, I don't think they even know at that point, at that age, that there are inappropriate, inappropriate sites that they could go to. In fact, if you try to watch something like HGTV or something with them, it's like they don't want to see that. You know, it's like they want the cartoons or, <laughs> or whatever. So that's good that they're at that age. But I'm, I think, I think the key is making sure you are seeing and observing what your kids are doing. 99.9% .9 of the time. I mean, I was fortunate when my kids were being raised, they, you know, we didn't do the computer unless we were doing things together. There wasn't social media back in the day. Um, and we did educational games. I remember those discs that we put in that you did those activities. I, I don't even know it was by PBS or somebody that we did uh, like Oregon Trail, things like that, where you played things together that actually there were not even, it was a start of video games when uh, they were growing up. So I, I think being aware, and I know there are apps that parents can have that they are aware of what their kids are doing. And I know kids don't like that, but I think, yeah. you know, parents have to uh, be aware, mm -hmm. I think. And, and, and Judy, I agree. And and uh, school devices virtually always have good, strong internet filtering software on them. But older students, by older, I, I mean uh, students uh, age 8, 9, 10, they probably know ways to get around that filtering software. Um, it, but for the home, it, the filtering software is a tool that you should have. It, it's not enough. But it's it's the start. It, it's it's a good thing to do. If you think about driving, um, you know, the seatbelt is a tool to help keep you safe. It, it, if you go too fast, uh, if if you <coughs> uh, 
run red lights, you can still get in trouble, but it helps keep you safe. And that's how it is with internet filtering software. Yeah, and and um, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah, and we'll um, okay, you cut here. that part out. Excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll let you recover before I start that again. Oh gosh, <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. Um, Isn't that good? Double stopping me from talking. I don't know. Um, well, uh, we'll have to. Um, finalize here finish up um, the couple of the apps and, and I know Roger I'm going to ask you to send me some of those internet safety links and I actually have an email when we did this with a district like the people to contact the organizations to contact that'll help you educate your students on internet safety um, I do know that districts use like go guardian and bark and I've Life heard feed, complaints yeah. about bark um, the one that I used as a parent to watch what um, Brent did was, and it's spelled with a Q, but I always called it custodio, like I'm like custody of, but I could, I knew where his, it had a phone locator. So I knew where he was all the time. I also knew what his text messages were. Um, he's not on Facebook. It didn't have the ability to be on Instagram and Snapchat and all chat and all those things at the time, but it was enough to see ingoing and outgoing calls and text and messages that were going out of his phone and also knowing where he was um, that made me feel good. And that it's Q U S T O D I O. Um, but we'll put that on our website um, to give you more information um, in regards to how to keep your kids safe online and how they should be sharing information online, more specifically photos. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, always look at the resources included on our website. You can see that link on the page um, or on the video um, on your screen right now. Um, but it's been really good talking to you and chatting with you today about our topic, um, our topics. And um, we'll see you next time for whatever thing we decide to talk about in our next Know It um, Now and live with NWAT. All right. So thanks a lot, guys.